الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد يقول الله عز وجل شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse it was in the month of Ramadan that the Quran was revealed as a guidance for mankind clear messages giving guidance and distinguishing between right and wrong and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam how did he deal with the Quran in this blessed month what was his personal sunnah how did he spend his time sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we find that in every Ramadan, Jibreel used to come down and he sallallahu alayhi wa would review the entirety of the Qur'an in this month. And when he sallallahu alayhi wa was on the, the year that he passed away, it is in that year that he sallallahu alayhi wa reviewed it twice. But we find with him sallallahu alayhi wa that he didn't have the book in front of him just like we have the book today. And amongst the companions, we didn't find the same presence or the same mushaf. So how did they interact and how did they engage? When they made it to Kaf, when they spent time, what were the things that they were doing and what are some of the lessons that we should be learning from? Did they sit down and go through the Quran like we do today? Or did they sit down with individual verses or sit down with individual surahs and actually ponder on those surahs and those verses and how to implement them in their lives. Because me as an individual, I have the Quran on my phone, I probably have two copies in my home, I probably have a copy in my car, I probably have another copy in my workspace. But how much time do we spend with each of those different copies of the Quran? Are we actually sitting down and pondering over what it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in trying to engage us in. How many of us hope to have a conversation with Rabbul Alameen, the Lord of all people? And how many of us hope that He is the one He blesses us today and He gives us today? We all hope for these things. But hope is not enough unless we actually engage with Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Call on me, Aruni, Stajib Lakum. I will I will answer you. There's no delay. As soon as the request is made, the answer is made at the same moment. The only thing that is preventing it is me. Because I am not asking. I am not engaging. I am not seeking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And why is that? Because we've fallen out of practice. Many times we'll rely on the Qari to give, make dua for us in Qunut. Many times we'll sit in a majlis waiting for the Imam to make dua on our behalf. Why is it that we are shy to engage directly with our Lord? Why is it that we do not speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when He encourages us so many times throughout His entire book to seek from Him, to ask Him, to request from Him, Azza wa Jal? And how much does it take to ask? All it takes is setting aside some time every single day to sit down and explore my heart and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those things that I am short in. And I'm not asking for one of two reasons. Either I feel I have everything that I need, or I'm too arrogant to ask. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from both of these situations. And if I know that I have shortcomings, and if I know I need to improve, and if I know that I'm hurting others or taking advantage, then what steps am I taking to improve myself and improve my relationship with His book? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this book so that when we ask Him, it is through His book that He speaks to us. Yes, every, every verse, every chapter, every ayah, every surah has a reason of why it was revealed. And part of the reasons that some of these verses and some of these surahs and some of these ayat are revealed is for me as an individual. How many of us have had problems or issues or difficulties and all we did one day is we happened to open up the Mus'haf and there was an ayah there that we came across and it directly affected me and it had an effect on my situation and it gave me an answer to my problem. The problem is that we don't do that enough. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to every single one of us. He's addressing all of us. And in many cases, He is addressing me. But the only way for me to engage is for me to ask. 
The only way for me to engage is for me to seek. That call on me and I will answer you. Sometimes the answer will come in the form of a verse. Sometimes the ayah will be koni. I'll see something outside. Allah will give me a reminder. I'm angry at my car and I'm driving by someone who, ha who cannot start his car. Why? It is a reminder for me that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me with a running car. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me with gas in my car. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not burdened me with what he has burdened him. And he might be facing his own problems. He might be facing his own issues. But for me, it's an ibrah. For me, it's a lesson. Am I taking and am I learning from that lesson or no? I need to make sure that I take all of these verses, I take all of these signs, and I implement them sincerely. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of His infinite mercy, He didn't need to give me these signs. He didn't need to give me these ayat. He didn't need to show me these lessons. He's not obligated to do so. But because He is merciful, because He's our Rabb, because He cares for us, because He wants good for us, he continuously gives us signs day after day, hour after hour, moment after moment. But how many of us stop to think about these signs? How many of us stop to engage with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us? How many of us have sat down to read the Quran in our native tongue in a way that I can understand? And I want to share with you a few statements. From them is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنِ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عَنِّ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجْهُ فِيهِ اِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا That will they not reflect on the Qur'an? If it had been from anyone other than Allah, they would have found much inconsistency with it. And it is in the pondering of his book that we find and we fortify our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how we find consistency throughout the entirety of the book. There is no inconsistency in the Qur'an. The message is consistent. The message is the same. And the message permeates from Fatiha to Nas. Are we getting any of those messages? Are any of them reaching our hearts? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the other thing He says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ أَقْفَالُهَا That do they not ponder over the Qur'an or is it that their hearts are covered in locks? Not one lock, locks. That many times there are layers to unlocking our access to the Qur'an. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He doesn't say that there's locks on the Qur'an. He said the Qur'an is open. The Qur'an is available. The Qur'an is understandable. The only thing that is preventing me from engaging with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's books are the locks that I have placed over my own heart. And what are those locks? Well, those locks can be jealousy. They can be envy. They can be malice. They can be hatred. They can be all of these negative things. And one of those things is many times arrogance. And we take things for granted. We think that the guidance will come just by parroting the words on the page. And there is barakah in it. There is blessing in it. And if any of us is reading a daily amount every day, continue reading that. I would never discourage anyone from doing that. But is that the purpose of the Quran? I can do that, but if I take one verse and I sit down and I ponder it and I implement it and ask myself, how does this verse make me feel? What are some of the lessons that I take from this? How can I implement this in my life? How can I pass this down to my children? How can I talk about this with my coworkers or my friends or my colleagues? Allah has given us this beautiful book. He's given us this beautiful manual. How many of us take it as a true manual of guidance in our lives? We need to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this book as a source of guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kitabun anzalna ilayka mubarakan liyudabbiru ayati liyatadhakkaru ulil albab That this is a blessed book which we have sent down to you. For people to think about its messages and for those with understanding to take heed. How do we become those with understanding? If we are not engaging we are not going to understand. And what is one of the best ways to engage? By asking. How many of us have a translation or have a Quran with us and next to it we have a notebook? Every time I come across an ayah or every time I come across a, a surah, what questions do I have that come to mind? 
so that I can get clarity and so that I can engage better with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the book of Allah is a gift, ya akhwan. But how many of us have truly accepted that gift? Or how many of us take it and we think that memorizing is going to protect us? Or we think just reading is going to protect us? Yes, it might protect us from otherworldly ills. It might protect us from unseen harms. But is that what is going to bring me true guidance? Imam Tabari, he says, عَجِبْتُ لِمَنْ يَقَرَ الْقُرْآنِ وَهُوَ لَا يَعْرِفْ مَعَانِيهَا كَيْفَ يَلْتَذَّ بِقِرَاءَتِهِ that I'm amazed at the one who reads the Qur'an and doesn't understand its meanings, how can he enjoy reading it? Imam al-Mufassirin. This is individuals considered the Imam of all of the scholars of Tafsir. Imam al-Ajurri, he said, وَالْقَلِيلُ مِنَ الدُّرُوسِ مِنَ الدَّرْسِ الْقُرْآنِ مَا الْفِكْرِ فِيهِ وَالْتَدَبُّرِهِ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِنْ قِرَاءَتِهِ الْكَثِيرِ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ بِغَيْرِ تَدَبُّرِ وَلَا تَفَكُّرْ فِيهِ وَظَاهِرُ الْقُرْآنِ يُدِلُّ عَلَى ذَلِكَ وَالسُنَّةِ وَقَوْلِ الْأَيْمَةِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ That little study of the Qur'an with contemplation is more beloved to me than reciting a lot without reflection. And the apparent meaning of the Qur'an points to this, so does the Sunnah and the statements of the Imams of the Muslims. And lastly, Ibn Qayyim, he says, فَإِذَا قَرَأَهُ بِتَفَكُّرْ حَتَّى مَرَّ بِآيَةٍ وَهُوَ مُحْتَاجٌ إِلَيْهَا فِيهِ شِفَاءَ قَلْبُهُ كَرَّرَهَا وَلَوْ مِيَةَ مَرَّةٍ وَلَوْ لَيْلَةٍ فَقِرَاءَةَ آيَةً بِتَفَكُّرْ وَتَفَاهُمْ خَيْرٌ مِنْ قِرَاءَةِ خَتْمَةٍ بِغَيْرِ تَدَبُّرْ وَتَفَاهُمْ وَأَنْفَعَ لِلْقَلْبِ وَعَدْعَ إِلَى حُصُولِ الْإِيمَانِ وَذَوْقِ حَلَاوَةِ الْقُرْآنِ that if a person reads it with contemplation and comes across a verse he is in need of to treat his heart he repeats it even if it were a hundred times even if it were for the whole night for reading one ayah with contemplation and understanding is better than completing the whole Qur'an without co contemplating and understanding. It is more beneficial to the heart and closer to increasing iman and experiencing the sweetness of the Qur'an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who do tadabbur of his book. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد يقول الله عز وجل فلا يتدبرون القرآن أما لا قلوبهم أقفالها الله سبحانه وتعالى states do they not ponder over the Quran or is it that there are locks over their hearts how do we unlock some of these hearts some of these locks يا أخوان how is it that I draw nearer to his book how is it that I develop a more meaningful relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And one of the easiest and best ways is learning and teaching how to love. And sometimes this might feel strange, and it might feel odd, and it might feel different. But if I do not train myself to love, then it is not possible that I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not possible I love the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is not possible that I love my spouse or my children or my family or my community. This culture of hardness, this culture of rigidity, this culture of inability to change, this is something that we need to change within ourselves. And can only change by loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and loving His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When was the last time that we embraced our loved ones? Or we told them that we love them? It is it is only through expression that these expressions will actually reach our hearts. What is preventing me from telling my spouse I love her, or from telling my children I love them, or from telling my friends I love them, or from telling my companions that I love them? What is stopping me? Many times it is only my own arrogance. And this hardness of our hearts is a sickness. It's something we all need to work on. And I know it's not something we all like to talk about or we like to hear. But we need to ask ourselves, why is my heart so, heart so hard? Why is it that I do not have softness for my brother and my sister? 
If I see someone doing something or someone trying to hurt me, why can I not overlook it? Why do I need to take a stand? Why do I need to be so harsh or so hard? And we will find because that love, all this love I was talking about, how we spread it out between these different entities, all of that love is only being channeled to myself. Because I love myself more than I love anyone else. And it's so, love is such an amazing characteristic that the more I express it, then the easier it is to receive. And whether that be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love, or love from a family, or love from community, or love from others. But if I do not teach myself this characteristic, if I don't learn how to embrace, if I don't learn how to express, then I will not have meaningful relationships. And what does that mean? That sometimes I will have to complain to Allah. That sometimes I will be upset. Sometimes I won't be happy with my situation. Sometimes I will want more. But if I cannot express that to Him, جل, then I will never be able to express it. And I will forever be frustrated, forever be angry, and forever be relying on myself. And this is not tawakkul. This is not reliance. True reliance is relying on Him, Azza wa Jal. And that means I need to know my place. And that any ability comes from Him. And all ability, wala hawla, wala quwwata, illa billah. That all ability, all might is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this involves me lowering myself, it involves me humbling myself, and it involves me bettering myself. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, uh, to allow us to utilize this month to better ourselves, to engage with his book, to do tadabbur of his book, to do tafahum of his book, to do tadaras of his book. I ask him azza wa jal to have mercy on all of those who have passed, to give shifa, to give healing to all of those who are ill, to help all of those who are in any type of financial hardship out of that hardship, to help any of those who are in debt out of their debt. And lastly, there was a a special dua for Sara. She just gave birth um, and she had a surgery. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give her shifa and a quick recovery from the surgery and to give them a healthy child. And we ask him finally, Azza wa Jal, to gather us up in his paradise just like he has gathered us here today.